Okay, we're going to look today how to import 3D data into Doug Insight. So open up Doug Insight, navigate to it on your computer. It just takes a moment depending on the size of your computer. Okay, and now we're going to create a new project. So I'm going to click on Create New. Unless you want to load it into one that's already existing, I'm going to choose a directory. And I'm going to go somewhere on my computer where it's going to make sense that I can find it again. Um, so I've actually created here, well, I'm going to create a folder that says Doug. Inside. So I say D-U-G. And I'm just going to save all of my projects inside of there. And maybe this one, I'm going to give it a different um, subfolder. So I'm going to call it Sweden because it's data from Sweden. I'm going to click Save. So it says, do you want to convert this into a Doug project directory? I click yes. Okay, it says select the coordinate system. Um, I think I've come to realize that if you're not sure of what it is here, it's not a problem. Um, for now, I'm just going to load it. I know that the coordinate system where I'm working is UTM 32 North. So I, I'm going to click on it. I'm not going to uh, choose the first option. I'm going to say select it from standard table. And then it comes up here. And it shows you your projection, your units, your datum, your ellipsoid. You can read up about that. And so I know I want WGS84 and then UTM. So UTM is usually quite near the bottom of anything. So here it is down at the bottom. And so I want WGS84 UTM zone 32 north because I'm in the northern hemisphere. Click OK. Datum I'm not going to specify. Reference datum is very important if this if you're not using the same data set as me you look through the notes about the data set as to what the reference datum is there's usually always a value um, and so I know ours is 290 meters I click OK and you can see it's changed the project name now I'm going to go to SC, uh, SegY loader and then you're going to choose your memory usage I must admit I've struggled, nothing opens up if I change it, so I've always leave it on 200 and I click on launch, but you're welcome to play around with it and see if it's different on your computer. And then it's busy loading up the Segway loader. can also just take a bit of time. Maybe while it's loading I'll pause it and then I'll come back once it's up and running. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Do you want to load 2D or 3D data? I know mine is 3D data, so I click on 3D volume. Is your data in time or depth? Um, I actually have both uh, Segway files because it's a project that's already been processed. So I'm going to first do time. Are you loading gathers? Um, no, mine's already processed data, so I'm going to click no. I'm going to click on next. It says what files do you want to add? So I'm going to click add files. And I'm going to navigate to the files. I've actually got mine saved on an external here. I navigate it and I'm looking for this. Um, I'm loading time. So the myg underscore time dot segue. So this is data from Sweden in a 3D survey that they've done. And I make sure it's the time data because above it is the depth data. I click open. Click next. Okay, and so what happens here is it's now trying to take the Segway data that's got several different type of heading files and find the information it needs from these headers. So you can see here, one of the first headers is EBCDIC header. Now if I click on this, it's in quite a bad state. There's not that much information about the header. So unfortunately, we're going to have to enter in stuff ourselves. The binary header over here. Um, it shows you all different values you can get, line number, real number, and so this is the like abbreviation for it, and these are the values. And then trace header, and um, you can see trace sequence line, trace sequence file, all different things. Important stuff for us is source X, source Y, number of samples, sample interval, but it actually picks all of this up usually by itself. So now we're going to look at the the fields that need to be filled in. So the first thing here is number of samples. It's telling you it's in the binary header and the 
byte location or where the location is that we're going to find the files is over there. So what I've done here is I've opened the binary heading and I'm now going to look for HNS and so we look down you can see HNS is here, it says samples per trace which is the num what we're actually looking for, it says number of samples. So samples per trace is 1001. So because this has been, this abbreviation has been put in here, it knows where to look. So it's automatically picked up this 1001. And the same for this next one, but sample interval in the binary header file, the abbreviation is HDT. So I look down here, it's HDT, sample interval, it's 1000, and it's already picked that up. So that's great. Then, okay, now we've finished with this, I'm going to close it. First thing is, first sample time or depth. It's in the trace header file. I open that up. And it's automatically going to look at um, a byte location of 109. So 109, you can go down here, and um, is the delay recording time, which is effectively the same thing, the first sample time. So what is the delayed recording time? And so it's looking in this row, but it's looking in int 16 column and you can see here's int 32, int 16, uint float so it's looking in this column and it's taking this value of 0 hence the fact it's highlighted and then it's put the 0 value over here. You can go look through what these, um, just google it, what int 32, int 16 mean just different data formats um, so it's picking that up automatically. Now we go here to inline and crossline and it's got a byte location listed here, but it gives a value of zero. So it's not picking up the correct values here. And these inline and crossline values come from this EBCDIC header, so I open it up, and it's because it's in a bit of disarray that it's causing problems. So we have to actually physically type in the location of where to find inline and crossline. And um, thankfully, the people who prepared the survey have given us this information. So if you go into the post stack depth migration folder if you're working with this exact data and go down here to header info.txt and open it up, they've told us this is the appropriate header information inline is at byte 9 and crossline is at byte 13. So you need to go here and change this to 9 and change this to 13 and you can see it's picking up correct values here. Okay, now the next thing you can do is go down further here, and we're not going to um, provide tie points. We're actually going to calculate tie points from XY headers. So click on the second option, and some more options will come up below. So calculate tie points from XY header, and it wants X and Y values. Again, it's given byte locations that are giving zero values. So something is wrong here. But again, they've actually told us, so the X should be 73 and the Y should be at byte 77. So these are locations where it's going to find the information for tie points. So let's go here and put in 73 and put in 77. And you can see it's picking up values. And these are actually our X and Y values. Um, the, this is the coordinates that the, sorry, that the survey has been collected in. You'll notice the UTMX and the UTMY, the X's are around 3 million and the Y is about 7 million. Okay, and I think we keep the rest the same. And what it's telling us here is it's going to convert from this coordinate system into this one. And this first one is the one we listed when we set up the project. And it's going to convert to the correct coordinate system for this for the data. But actually we chose the correct coordinate system in the beginning, so it's not actually going to have to do any conversion. So you click next, it says I found one trace with x larger than 83,000. Um, this may be correct but it's unusual, are you sure your header mapping and units are correct? Just click yes. Okay, and then these are filters that can be applied, we're going to click the default, click next. And now we can click on start, so it's going to analyze the data. And you want to make sure that all of this is in blue, that means everything's worked out okay. If it's in orange or if it's in red, then there's a problem. Well, orange is a warning, red is a problem that you can't go forward. So click next. Give this a survey name, I'm going to call it Sweden. And you can see here, it has automatically picked up these, this data. These are the inline value, the crossline values, the X and the Ys. 
So it has taken the header information which we put in and picked up the correct x and y values for the inline and cross lines. So this means that everything's been done correctly. If this comes up blank, it means you haven't followed it, some of the steps I've recommended. It picks up the inline spacing, the cross line spacing, um, the orientation and the angle between the two, which should be about 90. Click next. It again says that it's worried about the size, um, but I'm happy with it, so I'm going to click yes. Here I'm going to choose an output name, so click on select file, and I'm just going to give it a, a name here, so I'm going to say Sweden, save, class type or the data type. I think the best option here is to go down and go to stack full, click on that, and you can leave the rest as the same, click on next, and now it's busy loading the data. So this can take a bit of time, so again I'm going to pause while this loads up, but everything should stay in blue. Okay, so once it gets to done, click on finish, click on quit, yes. Now you're going to go back here to your Doug Insight launcher and click on Doug Insight. Click on launch. May take a bit of time again. Okay, and so eventually this launcher will come up and then go here down to survey. Go up to this blue plus and click on the right arrow next to it click load survey already in project and there should be listed your Sweden data that you just imported or whichever data you have imported click add to session and it's added it here now click view map view and it will load up a map just showing you the extents of your survey area so you can see here it shows the inline and cross lines I'm going to minimize that now you go to volume click on the blue plus or the arrow next to it and click load volume already in project should already list Sweden click add to session and now click view 3D view and it gives a 3D view and it should be blank for now and you can rotate it if you go to this top right hand corner here click on the quest on the magnifying glass and then click on Sweden it actually loads in your 3D data at the bottom. So yeah, this is how you make sure that your data is loaded in.